Hotel Bar and Grill. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to episode, I don't know which fucking number, <laughs> of the Real Bar Podcast. Um, I'm here with my co-host, RJ Ferrucci. What's up, man? What's going on? Excited about this one. For what, dude? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we got our guest this week, Kat Rude. What's up? Hey, what's going on? Thanks for coming. Um, all right, so this is going to be a pretty cool episode because uh, obviously there's a lot of a lot of things we want to get to and talk about with Kat. Just uh, first thing I want to hit on is like your busy schedule. I mean, at least from what I can see, not that we're like we hang out or anything, but like social media wise, you're always busy, always doing something like what's what's up with your schedule? Why is it so hectic? Oh, uh, honestly, where do I even begin? Well, like a lot of people know I'm at the hospital, so basically I should just sleep there. Honestly, I shouldn't come home. But if you were watching me at all this past semester, I was in school, I was doing the hair business, and I was at the hospital basically full-time when on paper I'm like part-time. So I just, I don't know, it's hard to balance, but if you ever come to my house, you'll see there's like a bunch of sticky notes everywhere. That's literally how I manage my life right now, is just sticky notes, like the little notepad and stuff in my phone. Because if I don't, I may not go to work, (laughs) I may not wake up on time, and like with school and stuff, I just wouldn't get like assignments done. So, um, you said you work at a hospital. I mean, I knew that obviously, but for people that didn't, what do you do at the hospital? And does it have anything to do with like what you went to school for? So, I'm a medical scribe. A lot of people, I kind of, you know, dial it down to being the doctor's assistant. Basically, if you're ever in the ER um, and you see somebody walking around with like a laptop, with the you know doc or the PA somebody like that that's me I basically just go in the room they do the physical ask pretty much why you're here how you're feeling today and I just type away basically don't say anything to anybody nobody really acknowledges me I am kind of like you just you don't really notice me so so you're like uh (laughs) The person, like in those movies, at like the courthouse, that just types everything what that like the called? fucking. Ju- I don't know. I fact checker. No. Well, yeah, we need a fact. <laughs> yeah, we do need a fact. <laughs> Someone fucking check these facts, all right? No, I think that's called like a scribe too. Because oh, like a scribe is just no, basically no, no, no. you're there's writing a, stuff down. There's a word for it. Do you want me to I look? I know there's a word for it. Are you gonna look? Uh, yeah, we well, we're I'm supposed to be hiring look. a fact checker a fact that sits over there, and they check all our facts. But isn't that what Drew's for? Wasn't Drew De Blasis? Wasn't he your fact checker? How did you know that? I watched the episode. He said he was... G- oh, he said live he, he wanted it. to do it. Wow, he watched the episode. Love it. Wow. First time for everything. No no guest ever watched the episode. <laughs> oh, man. Um, no, nah, but uh, like you are asking, um, it's not really stenographer. a part of what I went to school for. No, go ahead. Stenographer. Stenographer? Oh, stenographer. That's fancy. That's pretty much what you are. So I would, a medical ever asked, stenographer? Like, on your resume, I'd be like, all right, I'm a stenographer. Sounds cool, right? No, but she's all, she's actually a medical <laughs> scribe though. They're different professions. Actually, medical scribe sounds pretty cool too. Not really. Shit, I don't know which one I like more. I that's what um Malachi did before because now he's going to school to be like a doctor, or surgeon, or something. Mm. He had to be a scribe too. Oh, be he had to. Well, I don't know if he had to, but it, it just looks good, right? It's like you get it's, hours or something like that. I mean, I you get know. paid. Like yeah, you get clinical hours is really what it comes oh. down to, and you get paid for it. So probably for him. Um, you don't necessarily need that for medical school. A lot of it, a lot of it's for like if you're going to PA, but you know, depending on where I fluctuate in my future career or whatever, like I might need a lot of clinical hours. So I'm, I'm definitely racking them in and getting paid at the same time. So I can't ask for anything better. I feel Perfect. Yeah, I feel like I still missed the part. What do you? What you? I don't. I might have <laughs> just. Wait, wait. What? What? <laughs> where, where, where are we going with this? Because I think I either ignored it or I just didn't hear it. What do you go to school for? Or did you? Oh, go sorry. See, no, she, oh, she didn't oh, say. I, didn't it. I know no, she no, didn't I was say. Get to it, but then he was talking about you know yeah. what the one in the lawyer <laughs> or <laughs> the law houses. No. Um. So I went to school for forensic science and really the scribe job. It kind of goes hand in hand because I want to be a medical examiner or a forensic pathologist basically you know for people who are like oh god what is that it's like you're working on dead people as a doctor so I want to go to medical school and I just kind of figured getting the 
um, exposure or the experience being in the emergency room would just give me like a, a good upper hand for when I'm sending in applications and stuff. People, not a lot of people are scribes, so when you know admissions or whatever is like, oh my god, like talk about that, talk about your experience, like it kind of gives you an edge up on your application. So really, it didn't have to do with what I went to school for, but for what I want to do in the future, it kind of you know adds a little more meat to my application. Yeah, we talked about this before. What? With uh, with Drew, the the internship, he th- he mm-hmm. didn't think it was like that big of a deal, and then we kind of talked about how much it actually means. And and you're saying right now, like it's not an internship, right? But mm-hmm. it's still beefing up your resume, and it's yeah. still like it's gonna put you ahead of the next person. Obviously, I, I did an internship um, last summer in a medical examiner's office, and even mm-hmm. like you're saying, even an internship gives you you know a bigger push than some other people. Because, you know, some people just, they're super smart. They don't need the internship or the medical, clinical experience. They just get into medical school because they have a 4.0 and amazing yeah. grades. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not me. So <laughs> I need all the help. But yeah. So how many years did you have to go to school? Are you still in school? Are you done? I, I mean, I think it's like eight for most PhDs, right? I don't know. So I did three and a half for my undergrad at Syracuse. And then I stayed and did my master's, which I, I just got this past spring. Wow. Congrats. Congratulations. Thank you. So yeah. how many years total? for for So for your bachelor's and your master's? Six. How many? Five. Whew. Five. Yeah, because I did my wow. master's in like a year and a half. Basically, Ooh, this crap. semester I only had like one class. Mm-hmm. So I would really say I, you know, maybe four and a half years. I really Still. wouldn't count this past semester, but I like officially got the degree this semester. <laughs> four wow. and a half years. That's when I got my bachelor's. <laughs> <laughs> it, it took me five years to get my bachelor's. No, like no shit. So that's actually, congratulations. That's Thank awesome. You. Damn. Honestly, that's really like awesome. a lot of it helped because when we were in high school, or whatever, I had like all those credits from MV and stuff. So when I went to Syracuse, I knocked out like my entire freshman year based on college courses. So it just mm. gave me that edge and I mean, I would like to say it saved me some money, but I stayed an extra year at Syracuse for my master's, so there's another 60 grand. <laughs> Let's be honest. You're not saving money at Syracuse. No, I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the, it's for the no. experience. It's all right. But um, for, for med school, that's another four years when you get in, and then after that, you have to do a residency for, like, two to three years. And when in my profession, mine will be, like, two to three years, probably three years, honestly. And then I have to do what is called a fellowship in forensic pathology itself. Hmm. And then then I can be, like, qualified. So basically, at my rate, I won't really have a job job for what I want to do until I'm, like, 30. And I'm 22. So, so is it – I don't even know. What's the average salary of your position? For uh, medical examiners? So medical examiner or you said forensic pathologist oh, forensic or whatever, like, wherever um, you think you want to be. So the average, honestly, it, it depends on the level. If you're a chief medical examiner, you yeah. can get like $200,000 a year. Oh, okay. So it is worth it. Yeah. It is worth Okay. So there's some... <laughs> no, no. Because there, you, you know that sometimes the debt you incur mm-hmm. from school but. ends up... Like not being worth it in the long run. But I had never heard of a fucking PhD where the money you make afterwards isn't worth the bill, the Look debt you have. That's cool. That's cool. Sometimes can be like that. Vets I mean, make money. That's 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 make about a hundred k, right? But they're paying the same as a PhD because they're technically doctors of of veterinary medicine, so they're paying the same, but they're getting paid less. That's what I'm saying. So like. Yeah, but eventually it's gonna they're gonna fucking pay off their loans and be oh, balling. Yes, yeah, so you pay off your loan like obviously if you, anybody with a job can pay off their loans eventually. I'm yeah. just saying when. Mm-hmm. It, so obviously in your case, it's very beneficial. Yeah, I would say. I mean like when you're coming out of medical school you have like three hundred thousand dollars added debt. Yeah. So that's like don't even like think about what I just did undergrad my master's program. Yeah. Like now I'm gonna add a lot more. I mean, but you're right, like when I get that job Yeah. Like I'll I'll have good money to be like all right I don't have to worry about you know paying back my loan or you know yeah but the other thing is interest too okay. so like you have let's say it's 300k for let's say it's 500k for your all your school you went you went to a private a really nice private school it's 500k that 500k is getting what probably six percent interest every year for as long as you pay up until you pay it off that that adds up eventually right mm-hmm. so that's that's what I mean by like. Is it yeah, worth no, it in I see the long what you're run? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's for what you're doing. It's definitely worth yeah. it. Yeah, I it mean, just, and I, I, you're totally right because I see the the bill that comes in for my undergrad loan, and you're right. Like with the interest and everything, I'm just like, God damn it. Cause, oh, yeah, I mean, and that's basically what we've been paying. 
like my mom's been helping me because yeah. obviously I've been in school and trying to save some money for what yeah. I want to do and stuff. But like we just keep paying the interest on it because you're right. If you don't touch that, forget it. And like you're like you'll never pr- like until a certain point you don't pay principal on it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. and it's just like holy crap. I miss my mouth with my beer. Keep going. <laughs> my bad. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, my <laughs> I love it. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> all right, so um, get me back on track. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> so back to like the podcast, Mason. Yeah, well, I was just listening. I was just trying to tune in. Um, so uh, getting back to like the you being busy shit and um, getting your masters and being a scribe. Um, talk about like what your work hours are. Like, don't you work overnights a lot of time or? Oh yeah. Something crazy like that. Yep. So um. I don't know if you heard me earlier, but I'm at two hospitals, so I'm in Rome, and then I'm out in Utica at St. Luke's. Rome is just one shift. It's noon to midnight, so like last night when I got out, you know, it's dark, whatever. Go right to bed because there's nothing else to do. Um, But when I'm in Utica, there's four different shifts you could have. So tomorrow I'm working 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. on one side, and then other times, like you said, I have an overnight shift, which is 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., or you could do 7 a.m. to 3 and then 3 to 11 but for whatever reason i keep getting stuck with these freaking overnight shifts and Ooh. i, I Over- fall asleep at the desk i'm not Ooh. even gonna lie to you you well, can say that okay. out loud you're not supposed to but i mean the docs they don't they don't care as long as there's nobody to be seen i mean they're right there next to you they're like i need to go to bed so if you just shut your eyes for a little bit, I mean it's, it's all right. Yeah, you're taking a nap. I mean, you're yeah. only as long as there's no if if there's someone there and you're napping, oh, that yeah. could be an issue. No, so we have these phones or whatever that they'll walk around the emergency department with, and if there's a person who comes in at 4 a.m. after you know a period of like nobody coming in, they'll page the doc and me if we like walk away from the desk for a little while to be like, all right, come back because. Like I said, if the doc doesn't mind you walking away and just kind of like shutting your eyes for a little bit, they'll do the same thing. So they basically page us to come back. So are you like tethered to the doctor in this in this kind of case? I'm not really sure how it like really works. Um, but not really tethered. So most of the time I just go with them to the initial encounter with the patient. Okay. Unless they say like, hey, come back with me. Most of the time a lot of them will just be like, all right, you can you can stay here, like finish up the note or whatever. Oh, I'm discharging this patient. I'm gonna, I'm going to go tell them. You don't have to come with me. Okay. So I'm like, all right. So I'm not always with them, but most right. of the time i mean we definitely sit next to each other so basically when i say like no one pays attention to me nobody but the doc like the doc only really knows my name no other nurses really know who i am they're just like oh yeah that's the scribe right there yeah. just ask her i'm like yeah. oh okay she has the notes um i keep hearing like a little echo but i don't know if it's fucking actually you know what i mean it's so slight oh i, I can't yeah you can't hear. tell I don't want to run the whole thing and then we can just cut it and not restart and pick up where we left off. All right, what's up, guys? We're back. Uh, we had a little technical difficulties, but we pick, we're going to pick right back up where we left off. So RJ's got a question for you, I think, Kip. All right, so there's been like a recurring theme throughout the podcast, and like people working really hard, juggling multiple things, and being successful at that. I guess my question for you is like, do you get frustrated when people are like, I don't have time, or like, I can't, I just can't do it. Does that like make you mad? Cause like you do a lot of things, right? Mm-hmm. And people are making excuses on one side, but you're out there doing all these things. Does that ever like frustrate you at all? Oh, Wait, does all it what? Time. Just, I want to hear. Frustrate. Okay. Did I say it wrong? <laughs> no, you're good brother. Oh, frustrate. I don't know. <laughs> Fr- Whatever. It's it. You know that, you know the word I'm using. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got it. <laughs> what did you say? Like frustrate? Is that Fu- what you're going at? Frustrate. Frustrate. I don't know. It's a weird word. There's Whatever. an R right after the F. Frustrate. Frustrate. It Frust- sounds weird coming out of my mouth. All right. Whatever. Moving no, on. no, you're, you're <laughs> like I, I do, like you're right, because I do, I do so many things. But you know, one person could work one job and come up to me, and be like, "Oh, I can't do this, I can't do that." You could do whatever you want, yeah. as long as you make it your priority. Like that's what I have to do. When I was in school and everything, and I had obviously both jobs, and you know, if I'm working out here and there, or I'm playing hockey. Like you just have to prioritize. Like if it means something to you, you'll get it done. Yeah. So a lot of these people, when they're like, "Oh, they're making all these excuses," I'm just like, "Well, it's not a priority," which is absolutely fine. Everyone's their own person. Yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, I'm like, well, I'm super busy because they're all important to me. I want to make time for the stuff that I want to do. So. Or even the time that. Like, you need to do these things. Like, do you yeah. want money? Yeah. Then you're going to work, right? Like, exactly. You're not just going to sit on your butt. It's, but, and it's, we've, we've seen this for a few episodes now. Like, people come on saying, like, I do all these things, right? And I accomplish everything I want to. 
And then I, I hear people talking, not on the podcast, but just in general, you hear people, yeah, I'm so tired. I worked 30 hours this week and <laughs> I have no time for nothing. Like, Do they want to come to my job? I worked 60 hours like exactly. two weeks and ago. That's, and that's like the main point of this. If you want it, you can do it Yeah. in most cases. So like, I, I commend you on that for real. Cause Thank like that's, you. it's tough. I mean, a lot of people, I feel like nowadays, and I mean, this is going to sound mean coming from me, but like everyone wants a free handout. They want things handed to them. They don't want to work for it. Mm. And I like, I was not brought up that way. Like, no, no like, you no. know, you know, my father, he's not yeah. just going to sit there and be like, yeah, sure. Kat, here's all this money. Like, you know, do nothing. And I'll give you the same amount tomorrow. No, he looks at me. If I got $5 from helping him pick up sticks, that was like Christmas. Okay. And literally when she says picking up sticks, that's something. <laughs> literally <laughs> literally, literally do. does that kind of thing. So, but yeah, I wanted to make that clear. Cause it's it just been, we've been showing that and like kind of showcasing people that are doing very well for themselves and working hard to do too well for themselves. So. Yeah, but I feel, like sure it's, I feel like it's kind of like a recurring theme, like you said on here. But I also think, like, not that it's bullshit, but, like, a lot of the people that are saying how hard they work also got a lot of those free handouts. Like, I'm not calling out people on the podcast. We kind of see what I'm saying. Back to the argument we had. I forgot yeah. who was on. When we were talking we, about, we like, this argument. How, like how we have more opportunities than certain people do sort yeah. of thing. Well, I like, I feel like a lot of the people that are like, oh, well, I, no offense to Cap, like, I went to Syracuse, and then I went there, blah, 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 and I have this degree, and I tr traveled abroad, and I worked my ass off and got an internship. Like, because you had those opportunities. I don't want to get into that argument, but you kind of no, see what no, I'm no. saying? I, yeah, it's... it's Yes, yes, she's is, working hard. A lot of people ethic, work hard. There you, you, your yeah. work ethic and what you were actually giving. Yeah, exactly. So you bansle it, but you you yeah. can't take away from the worth ethic. No, 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 no I wasn't. But I, I see what, what Mason's is going saying. On today? Hello, work ethic. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. No, but I know what Mason's <laughs> saying, yeah, because, like, from the outside looking in for some people, they're like, oh, yeah, they're absolutely lucky. I yeah. Mean, yeah, you could. Which I we could all, you, all three of us up here yeah, are lucky. We are I fortunate. Could, I could fortunate, tell you yeah. everything I do every day, and you're going to tell me every way that your life sucks compared to mine. That's fine, but you know what? Sometimes I had to work a little bit harder than you think I would have to get mm -hmm. certain things, which I can absolutely say. It just, in my mind sometimes, depending on the situation, like I get it, like school, I don't know, if you want to go to really great school, you should have studied a little, studied a little, wow, studied a little harder. Otherwise, like, you know, other stuff, I don't know, but. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. It's, it's you know me. I just played both sides no, of the coin. No, but and it's we we have a discussion, and it's yeah. It's you're not making an invalid point here. You're just kind of saying from if you're if I'm sitting outside looking on Facebook, looking at our names on Facebook, oh, they're privileged. Mm -hmm. But were we really that privileged? But we'll no, I, I, really I just to, to end it. I just think it's taking advantage of the opportunities you're yes. given. Yeah. Some people Absolutely. are given different opportunities, yep. but. You, everyone has a chance to fucking take advantage of it. I feel like all three of us would have, if we ha got an opportunity handed to us, we'd all say yes. Whereas some yeah. people would just yeah. be like, nah. That's Turn it, I don't have enough time yeah. for that. I think, I, I, I'll I think get that next week. Down. That's that's right. I think yeah. that's for sure. And I think that's, that really ends it right there. But um, all right, now that we're rolling again, um, <laughs> on to my next question. Uh, everyone everyone that's listening knew this one was coming. Um, <laughs> not a hard hitter yet, but uh, <laughs> I just kind of want to know um, – about your your hair care business so i know um on social media uh instagram i don't know if you have do you have snap i do so, so do i see stuff on snap too or is um, it probably instagram where i see it all m more instagram okay so so on throughout social media mainly instagram um you're posting about these hair care products this business that um i guess i would say you run it it's like your own business i yeah. guess i mean mm -hmm. you're not the ceo but like you, you're in charge <laughs> of your own hours sort of thing yeah yeah w what is it kind of give me like a general like synopsis of it and then we'll obviously dive deeper into okay. it okay so you want to hear just like the basis or how yeah I like how'd you it? how'd you find out about it how'd okay. you get into it what do you um, do so the basis of it it's um basically network marketing just via social media so like you said instagram facebook you can do snapchat i've seen people do that i just snapchats for my dogs honestly but um true <laughs> 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 but um yeah so it's naturally based hair care i basically just give my opinion if people want it, they reach out to me. Um, I give them recommendations. They buy. I make commission on it, and my day goes on. Um, so it actually, probably a year ago, a little, little over a year ago from today, I saw Caitlin Royce posting about it on Instagram. And she, like you said, working from anywhere, make your own hours. And I was just like, my God, I want to do that. Because like, I just got out of graduation for my undergrad and stuff, and I was like, man, she's making, like, all this money, doing whatever she wants. She's by the pool. Like, I was just slaving away in these final exams. Like, I want to enjoy my summer. 
And I had said I already did an internship, or I was going to do an internship later that summer, but it was in Poughkeepsie. It wasn't even like it was in Rome, and I always have a summer job. So I was like, well, this this sucks because I'm going to move away for like a couple months, Mm -hmm. not have a job. The internship wasn't going to pay me a dime. I was going to be there nine to five. Basically, after I'd get out, I'd just go home, eat, go to bed, restart my day. And that's, that's two months without getting a paycheck. Like, that's that's not what I was about. I literally have had a job since I was, like, 14. So not having money like that. Uh, so I, I literally just texted her, and I was like, hey, just tell me more. Because deep down I was like, it is too good to be true. But if you can not convince me, just explain it. Like, I'll hear you out. And she was great. Like, I mean, she's got no reason to ever lie to me. Like, we didn't talk a lot in high school, but we talked enough where I was like, all right, like you give me the information, I do my own research and we'll see where it goes. So that's basically how I jumped into it. She, you know, we had a few conversations and she told me what she does every day with it and I was hooked. I was like, you know what? If I hate it, I hate it and I'll stop. And if I don't hate it, I, here we are today. What is it, over a year later and I'm still doing it. Mm. Well, I had to, I had to stop you one place. Mm-hmm. So when you you say that and I'm not making any inferences here. I'm not trying to, I'm just asking questions. So when you said that Caitlin didn't get, wouldn't have a reason to lie to you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we should I know, make, sure, I know make sure we reach out to her and make sure we yeah, can use her name. She's a sweetheart and all that. Um, do you guys, as a company, get incentives for signing on more people? And that, it's just kind of a question. I, I'm not inferring no, anything yeah. on this one. So. A lot of times when people think of like network marketing, you think when someone signs on with you that you get whatever money they're paying, but we don't. Okay. So when we sign on, like it's hair care. So no one's going to believe you and be like, no one's just going to walk up to you and be like, oh yeah, I want to buy shampoo and conditioner without knowing that you've tried it because yeah. you're kind of like a hypocrite. You don't just do that. So we had to buy like what it's called as a product pack. And it's just like an assortment of products for you to use. You don't have to give it away. You don't have to buy anything else after that. It's just a discount rate of the products. And that's what you pay. Caitlin didn't get any part of me paying that. She, um, I think it's kind of like a recognition thing. But she didn't get any money from me doing that, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I feel like, let me grab that quick. Uh, I go I I personally feel like that, like, so what you asked and then what she said, almost weren't the same okay. so like I, i'm that's just yeah, what no, i from right. what i heard so like you were saying he asked if like she gets anything from you signing on and basically you were like you have to test it out and make sure like it's something you believe in prior to doing it and mm-hmm. she just gets like kind of like a kudos like recommendation sort of thing yeah but you also work based on like um like you said you get uh you get a certain amount of money based on what you sell yeah, sort commission. of thing yeah. Oh, so you, so you you did yeah, say that you do work commission. on commission. Yeah, I didn't want to say it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was saying like if well, when of course. We, when we, yeah, well, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to put words in her mouth. I didn't oh, know if no, she yeah, actually when said that. Buy from us. Yeah. Okay. Like, so we, we so you do. It, yeah. And yeah. So for her getting you on, she had to get some type of she got commission like from one, either. It was like a one time. But yeah. Like that's what I was gonna. Sorry. No, you're right. I said for like when people buy shampoo and conditioner in general. But for her getting you to sell the product, she had to. I see where you're going now. Yeah. Okay. So when people if I had signed up somebody I'd get like it's kind of like a bonus but you get yeah. it one time and you get recognized for it like an incentive after that like she doesn't get anything that I continue to sell if that makes sense yeah so she doesn't yes. make she doesn't make commission based on what cat sells yes. oh, but she no. gets an incentive for getting yeah. cat to Good. do it okay. in the first place yeah. and it is different for sure yeah yeah that's why I wanted to clear it and up now I see where you're going yeah. with the okay Makes yeah, a lot no, more actually, sense. that's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's why we're, we're just ask, asking questions. That, yeah, that's what we do. I that's just want to make sure I was no, on the right page. But um, so back to your previous statement, how like you were saying, you reached out to Caitlin, like it looked like she was like working from home, like making her own hours. So like, yeah, like I believe all of that's true. Like, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure you you work based on internet. Like, why just get on, post some stuff. Like, it's based on how how much you want to work or how little you want to work. Yeah. But like. It's it can't be a consistent paycheck and correct me if I'm wrong. So like if you don't make a cons- if you don't make a consistent paycheck, isn't it almost like not making your own hours? I mean, if it's your real full time job, I know you're a medical mm-hmm. scribe, but for people that are like, I feel like the people that promote it, and I'm not saying any names because like I see Caitlin stuff, I see yours, and that's why I want to ask him person. I feel like the people promoting it 
are making it seem like it's like luxury and oh, I'm going to buy a yacht this month or like oh God, I just got no. this car. And I'm like, dude, like, come, like it can't be all that. No, like everyone. It, well, it, it, no, is it's, it? But I this is the question. Is and it and that we're going to get deeper into it. And she knows based on the questions. Yeah. But like it can't be. I, I feel like I mean, and that's part of your job is networking and selling a product. Mm. But is it really all it's cut out to be? Like, it's really just, I can work out on the lake, and I'm making, I made $500 kicking my feet up. Like, that's what it is? I, I, first of all, I have to point out, I do love when you do this. <laughs> Me? Yeah. The wrist flick? Yes, yes. It was, it was nice. <laughs> nice little touch you put on that. <laughs> Fuck it. No, if you're on the lake, and you're legitimately sitting there talking to people, and you're putting in orders, hell yeah, you can make, like, four or $500 as long as you're, you know, putting in orders. You're not going to... I'll say this, a lot of people come up to me and they're like, do you make money posting on social media? No. That'd yeah. be that'd be nice, but we don't. Like, what you see me posting about the business, I don't make a dime on. It's to get people kind of questioning, being like, I don't know, a lot of people will come to my page, leave my page, and then they see something they're like, oh, that's interesting, and they'll reach out to me. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, no, like, if you're sitting on the lake, you gotta be doing the work, which is yeah. what what you're also saying like you put in as many hours as you want if you put in enough hours you will see that good benefit i mean i do put in a lot of hours between being at the hospital but like i know you were going with it rj like the long term if you stay consistent you do reap bigger benefits Mm. right now i don't necessarily do that because i will be honest like i stay consistent i could be better though like i'm busy so like and honestly you I don't like I like I, I follow you on Instagram obviously, and you do post sometimes, but you don't like you're not like create like I can tell that it's, it's not your uh, it's not like your priority right we talked about priorities yeah. and it's not like you're literally doing this as a side job would you agree with that I think based on her post like it's not always like you have stories that are like you're doing your hair or whatever like you're just kind of promoting right yeah but it's it's not like consuming your life because you also have other priorities. I think- and like I said, I'm literally not shit talking to anyone that promotes it. I don't really know too many people that do promote it, to be honest. But I feel like um, cats posts, regardless of how frequent they are, are more realistic than like some other, not even this company, just some other like same type companies have been like cat. Like I've seen her like in the shower with clothes on, um, like, w- w- like with her sister, like using the hair products. Like that's cool. That is cool. That is very cool. So I've been, uh, see, I, I I do my research. It's a mental notes. But um, yeah, mental notes. But um, but then I also see people who are like just promoting it to promote, like setting it up on a shelf or like okay. taking pictures with like like the lights we have behind the scenes, like, and that's where I like I kind of, I think the way Cat does it is a little better. Not not that like I literally am not comparing to any one person. I've just seen different ways things are promoted, and I think the way she does it makes it seem like it's incorporated into her daily lifestyle, whether it is or isn't. I don't care, and I don't know. But it looks like she actually uses it. It looks yeah. like her sister uses it, and like they show you them using it. So that's the part I think is cool. I don't, I don't know how to answer your question as far as like, does it look like it's like her priority? Because I'd say yeah. Like it looks like at least I don't know, but I'd say once a day, maybe once every other day, she's at least trying to get something out there about it, which is fine. Make yeah. your money. But I also I think the way she's doing it is the right way to do it. Like I don't want to see like the cookie cutter post where it's like. Hey, I'm selling this. Please come buy it. Like, I want to see you using it, telling me what it's doing for you while you're using it. Like, she does live stories where, like, people come in and she'll be like, oh, this is what I'm doing right now. I put this on for a half hour, then I take it. Like, that's cool. Yeah, you got to build that trust. Yeah. That's kind of what I was saying. Like, when you're starting with the business and you buy those products for you to use, like I said, no one's just going to sign up and you're going to go up to them and be like, buy my product without them knowing that you use it. Because if you don't use it, well, then why the heck should anybody else use it? Yeah. Well, so well it's just like Jasmine, right? With the toaster. Last episode, we talked about the toaster. She you she that's, uh, uses that toaster. That's not just like Jasmine. It's a little different because well, Jasmine does get paid to promote so that. I'm, so yeah, I'm gonna use I'm it if they're paying the me equation. to use it. But she actually uses it, stands yeah. by it, yeah. and promotes it. Yeah, for sure. And that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, and I definitely wouldn't stand by something that I don't absolutely love. Because mm-hmm. that's another thing. I'll be honest. When I started, like, I don't know. I'm a girl. You just wash your hair. You do whatever you got to do. So when I started, I was like, all right, luxury hair care, basically, all all natural, naturally based. I wasn't really in it for the hair care at first. I was like, yeah, if I could make some extra money, that'd be great. Of course. The benefit was getting the hair care because it's funny. A lot of people were like, oh, you don't know what you're missing until you try it. Well, 
that's exactly what happened to me. So, I don't know. It's like a two-for-one deal, honestly, in so my that's, eyes. Um, that's actually one of my next questions. So, I asked, like, do you – do you stand behind every product you sell? So I know it's a tough question to ask someone that sells a product. No, yeah. But so I, I don't know how many products you guys have. I'm assuming you guys have upwards of 20 to 100. Like there, there's probably yeah, definitely more. Than that, well, that's, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. Like, I don't know how big or small it is, but I'm sure there's multiple products. And I know just with like hair care and females, like not everything works for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, so do you personally stand behind every single thing you sell? Like, like even if it doesn't work for you, can you can you pitch that to someone knowing that it may, it might not work? I I see what you're saying. If something doesn't work well for my hair type, I actually will tell people that. Like I'll tell customers. I have like we call them VIPs or whatever. They that usually come back and they're like, I love the shampoo. I love the conditioner. Can you give me another recommendation? I've had a couple of people come back and say, I want to try this. Have you ever tried it? And like I said, if you don't try it, how do you how do you talk about it to other people? I've told, I have to tell them my honest opinion. I'll be like, honestly, like my hair doesn't work well with it, but you know, compare my hair type to your hair type, your hair type might work better for it and you can try it. And I usually follow it up with, if you don't like it, like I'll do an even trade. I'll trade products with people or mm -hmm. they can send them back. Cause I'm not going to make someone spend money on something they absolutely hate. Like if they want to return it and get something else, like like absolutely do it that's what i would do yeah. i wouldn't like sit there and be like you're right i hate this shampoo let me just use it now for the next four plus months so and this might be a question you don't want to answer we could either cut it or you don't have to answer it Sorry. um do you get an incentive to sell certain products each month are there products that are pushed harder than others like oh this month if you sell 10 shampoos you make this much extra there's not like a product, a featured product of the month sort of thing that no, you like you try to push on to people. There's no featured products. I think I posted it today. You get a free product mm. if you're a VIP. Um, yeah. That's just a benefit for them. We don't get anything extra from that. But no, oh, that's actually an interesting question because mm. I probably wouldn't have thought of that. No, every every product's definitely equal as long as you know the VIPs are happy, customers are happy, you're happy. You do well. But, That's yeah, I definitely don't, like, it's not like, we'll say, oh, I had a sale about hair masks, like, this past weekend. It wasn't like, oh, if you sell 10 hair masks, like, you're going to get, like, $100. It doesn't work that way. So normally, that's, like, a thing with companies based on that kind of, like, infrastructure is like every month or a couple of weeks they'll have a feature and it's like GNC like the push what's not selling yeah like the, something that's not selling or like they might have a large back stock they'll they'll feature and they'll be like uh 20% off this product and then to the people that are selling it if you could sell 50 of these you get an extra 500 bucks so you guys don't do anything like that no that's cool so I don't know if it's a que if, if it's a question we talked about but let's talk about what happens when a customer buys Monet mm -hmm. products, right? It has a very bad experience. And when I mean very bad, like, I mean, like... Talk closer to your mic. Uh, like, I'm, like, burning of the scalp. Like, these are normal things that happen with bad shampoo, right? Not bad yeah. shampoo, but shampoo that it doesn't... Doesn't happen. work for you, yeah. Yeah, it can happen. So, what do you... How do you, like, deal with that? And do you, like... Has it happened to you? One. Two, how do you deal with it? And three, like, do you understand why these things are happening or do you think it's a product issue or do you think it's just a person's skin issue i guess so you're saying like if like for the example with someone scalp burning it's like scalp burning or like the, like your hair like, like kind of like falling out general. i don't know if it ha has happened yet or mm -hmm. whatever i'm just kind of seeing no okay yeah so i've never had that happen okay I've heard, because obviously you Google anything. Like, yes. I'm sure you guys looked up the company. There's yeah. some nasty stuff out there about this company. There's nasty stuff out there about, like, basically anything if yeah. you Googled it. Of course. But like you're saying, I haven't experienced that with it actually happen happening to a customer, but I've had people come up to me who are, like, very interested, and then they would turn around and be like, but I heard this. Like, can you reassure me it's not going to happen? And I literally look at people, and I'm like, well, you see me go live. You, you see me use it is mm. my hair falling out mm. but I get it because we do have a couple people who have allergies and if they're allergic to some of like you know the oils and the products th you're not going to want to use them because you'll have an allergic reaction yep. I haven't personally had a VIP or a customer who had an allergic reaction okay. um, but in the instance if like your scalp's burning or something I think it actually happened to one of my friends at the time she was just like 
we probably got you the wrong shampoo. They switched it up. She sent sent it back, or they swapped products, hmm. and the VIP ended up loving the shampoo that she got and still uses it. Hmm. So, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily freak out if that happened to me. I kind of have, like, a way to just be like, calm down. Cause yeah. But, no, I, I absolutely, I get that. I mean, it's, it's not like a, a Monet thing. That's a, a shampoo thing, right? Yeah. Like you're putting something in your scalp, and... That's your hair, so like it's gonna be noticeable if things like say it starts falling out, or whatever. And I, I've seen it happen with other shampoo yep. products, not just Monet. I don't even know if Monet's happened to them yet, but I've seen like, oh, your hair starts falling out, or you get more dandruff. Or, I'm just talking the bad effects, because there's bad effects oh, to course. every shampoo. Yeah. It's natural, it's not natural. It yeah. doesn't matter. There's gonna be bad effects for for certain individuals, right? Yeah, I mean, we have people who try other shampoos, not Monet, and then come to us and are like, please help, because, like, I've tried everything under the sun, drugstore shampoo, professional shampoo, or whatever, and then they come to us and they're like, just, they're they're honestly at that last resort. They're like, what's the worst that could happen to me now? Yeah. So they, they take a trust in us. Yeah. And, I mean, we, we have great results. I mean, I don't know if you saw, but it was originally started to help cancer patients regrow their hair, which really was something I kind of like hooked on to because unfortunately I know a lot of people who've had cancer and you know they lose their hair and I just thought that was amazing like they weren't doing it for the money in the beginning they were just thinking of the those less fortunate yeah. that don't want to have like wigs and so that's really kind of what like kind of caught me on the shampoo after the fact so when people come up to me and they're like I'm losing hair I just sit, I, I like to sit them down I'm like well, look at these testimonies of people who you know had the same thing going on with what you have going on like as long as you trust me and like i said if it doesn't work out like it doesn't work out but well know. that's tough though you're you're asking someone to trust you but then if like so now like if you said are to trust me i would mm -hmm. but if like the results weren't good that's like a night like it's a bad reflection on you no, right because it messes the problem with you saying all right trust me because then you're like obviously you stand behind it and you don't think it's going to happen, but God forbid something like that does no, happen. Absolutely. Then you're, yeah, absolutely. Like I, mean, I guarantee you would feel like absolute crap. Oh, what, you're, what you're I'd saying is cry. like... like I hate, I hate letting yeah. people down or like And you're not them. fascist at all. Like you're just <laughs> just trying to help people, yeah. right? And it just... Basically what you're saying though, which is kind of exactly what I was going to ask, is like at the, end of her day, at the end of the day, her job is sales. Yeah. Like I understand she cares about the people and like she does, like she's behind the product. But at the end of the day... Her money comes on her selling the yeah. product. So whether like when she gives it to you, she does not know if it's going to work or not. She just doesn't for you. No. Like she understands the product. Yes, it works. It cleans your hair, whatever it may be. Like she knows like the general, you know what I mean? Idea mm -hmm. behind it. But she doesn't know if you're going to have a bad reaction or if it's your hair might fall. Like you, you don't 100 percent have the scientific like facts behind like and I promise it's going to work for you. And that's why I say put your trust to me. But like I will say for myself, like with the company and the products, I like my customers will get their products. It's like within the week I'm asking how you are. Like I'm asking. I don't just like give it to you that's and good. I'm like, all right, like have a good time with it. If you hate it, you hate it. Just let me know. Like I want to know because. I kind of use that because, like I said, if you have a problem with it, I want to know about it. I want to help you. And I don't want to, you know, make the same mistake going on with other people who are interested in the products, too. It, it's your rep on the line. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You're right. Like, that's your, tr like, you, like you said, your trust. or that's, like, that's you on the line. You're putting yourself out there for someone and being like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back this fully. Mm -hmm. Trust me and do this. And if it backfires, I'm going to take it on the chest. And that's really all there is to it. Yeah. I mean... That's, that's, no way I think it. that's like the weird part of it is like, like imagine like for mine and your perspective, imagine if you walked in and I know you like to drink yep. and I lined up 10 different cans of beer yeah. from Guinness to fucking a blue light, like all down the spectrum. And you were like, I want this one. I was like, ah, this one's got a good taste. Nice. Blah, 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 and I gave it to you. I don't actually know if you're going to like that taste. It's the same yeah. thing. She doesn't know if their hair She thing. doesn't know if their hair is going to take it the same way as your yeah. taste buds may take it. That's exactly but you stand behind the product. Like it's just it's just a sketchy kind of It's not like a car dealership where no. you can get in it, drive it around the block, come back, "Ah, eh, I want to try this one." It's not. Like you they have to buy it and try it on. Like there's yeah. there's no I guess to turn it into a question, there's no like your promotional package where you like mm -hmm. get to try it before you sell it. There's no buyer promotion where they get to try it before they purchase like an actual quantity. No. See, no. that's that's a little weird. You don't I think mean, that's like not weird, but like you don't think that should be maybe. Well, like I, I was possible. Gonna say, I was like gonna cut in because you were saying how like 
the scientific like yeah, lack yeah. of it. I mean, we have a scientific board who has tested the products. If that, I don't, I don't know if that would like kind of help answer your question to that too, because it kind of saying like they don't just test it before we. No, <laughs> it. I mean, I, I know it's all like scientifically like no, backed, yeah, like yeah, like yeah. FDA sort of like I know it's it's legal to it's get legit, put out. It's legit yeah, stuff, it's a legitimate sure. product. I'm just saying you don't know what their reaction, the customer's reaction is going to be. Well, like, like, the scientific board could say it's healthy, like, no one's fucking gotten cancer from it, whatever it may be. Like, it's safe. Yeah. But you don't know the exact person that you're selling it to. You don't know if they put it in their hair, if it's if their hair might fall out, or if they might turn red, or if they have itchy scalp, or it turns it gives them dry skin. That's the stuff that you don't know prior to giving it to them. Yeah, no. Basically, you're right. Like, I don't know for that specific person, because like I said, everybody's body and, like, their hair type is different we try to do we have different shampoos and conditioners that are based for specific hair types so like my shampoo would be different probably from the shampoo that i would recommend for you which would help kind of narrow down or give you i'd say like less of a bad experience i'll call it because there are there are people that get you know one certain shampoo and it doesn't work for them or it doesn't Mm -hmm. do what you said it was going to do so then it's like all right let me try to figure out something else for you um but I mean, yeah, I like that's where I kind of think I put my trust in Caitlin yep. in that moment to be like, you don't have any reason to really necessarily lie to me. But like, I'm putting my trust in you because, yeah, I'm eventually going to put this stuff on my head so I can talk about it. So. And you did trust her. And it, and if I can say this, I'm not sure if I can, but like, is it it's working for you? Oh, yeah. You trusted her. It's working for you. And now you're hoping the next person's going to trust you, right? Yeah, absolutely. that's just like, it's like anything. Like, even if I didn't do the business side of it, say I like quit the business tomorrow, I'd still buy the product. Yeah. And, and that's fair. I mean, and there's no reason to see like, no, I would never buy the product. I, I've seen all this stuff on Instagram. I don't like it. I just don't like it. I mean, that's, that's a tough judgment to make against someone because like, if you haven't tried it, right, you, you don't really know. And you could, Macy, you could put that stuff in your hair and your, your shit could just grow out nice and perfect. You had long ass locks. We do have stuff for thinning. We do, you know. I could, I could see Mason with like, lines, like a little perm or something. Lines. I don't know. I'm, I'm all set. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not saying I would never use it, but I'm, I'm all set. Um, all right. So, what you, so basically what you were just saying, this brings me to a tougher question. Um, so you were saying like she put her trust in Caitlin and then someone's eventually going to put her, their trust into her and like mm-hmm. as it goes. So, um, I looked this up and I mean, I compared it to other companies and like, I actually, I mean, I probably did like a good, and this probably will sound a little comical, but I probably did like two and a half hours of research. So like nothing crazy, just, I mean, Mm -hmm. probably close to two and a half, three hours, just looking it up, like different websites, different sources. And, um, I'd say it's split like 60, 40, 70, 30, maybe in the, in the good direction Mm -hmm. of, um, being a pyramid scheme. So I'm saying 60, 40, 70, 30, and it's not. But I have okay. seen a lot of comparisons to where it's very similar to something like Avon or Advocare, where like it's a legitimate pyramid scheme, and they're not illegal or anything like that. But yeah. it's it's not like a good way, I guess, to promote a business. So basically, okay, I mean, I'm sure you know what that is, and I'm sure people have asked oh God, you this. Yeah. Pyramid scheme is literally what it sounds like. So the bottom is all the workers who make no money, and the top is the people that own the company and make a shit ton. And the whole goal is to get people under you and you're in charge of them and it keeps going so on and so forth. And that's how you make your money is by getting people to start underneath you. So like, excuse me. So I personally have my own opinion on it, but I'll mm-hmm. say when we're done, but uh, well, not when we're done, but when we're done this like segment of the conversation, what is your response to like, is the company built like a pyramid scheme? And even if it is built like one, is it actually one? Um, Honestly, I and like this is not just be me being biased. I would not say it's built like a pyramid scheme at all, because um, like that of course was one of my worries when I had started. Like I said, I trusted her, but I didn't really know a huge amount about it. I actually had my aunt text me the next day, and she like said, "You're not working for this company, are you?" She's like, "That's a pyramid scheme, yada yada," and I was just like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Like, I don't know if she ever actually knew anything about it, but. Um, no, from from what I always understood was a pyramid scheme, like you're saying with Avon and Avicare, you you know you hire all these people, the workers at the bottom, and on top of it, the pyramid scheme definition is usually like you don't get anything in return. You like work very little, 
but get a lot of money as long as you get people on board. And sometimes, I mean, Evacare is kind of different. Like, I know they get product or they give out product, but other companies may not even give a product, which, yeah, that's absolutely illegal. You're not just going to take someone's money and be like, all right, like, it's lost in the mail or God only knows. Um, but with our company, with, like, Caitlin bringing me on, I can surpass her. I don't work necessarily underneath her. She just showed me the opportunity to begin and gave me the tools for training, which sometimes in pyramid schemes, you don't even get training. It's just kind of like, yeah, you don't have to do anything. Just, you know, invest a little more, invest in here. And we promise, promise that there will be like a bigger return. Whereas with Monet or the hair company, like I can do so much and kind of surpass her as long as I'm working hard for it. Mm -hmm. if that kind of makes sense so I'm not necessarily underneath her she's there if I need her obviously and I've made like so many friends through the company that you know everyone's kind of on a different level no matter how long ago they started if they recently started but there are girls who like could have or actually one of them that I'm really close with started a couple months ago and she's doing a lot more than I actually am and getting more money as a benefit of it and she's kind of like I don't know if that makes sense. But no, yeah. So it, it kind of brings us full circle the question we asked when we started. Before you, are you going to give your opinion? No, you? no, no, no. Okay, okay, go ahead. Go so ahead. it kind of brings us full circle to like the question you asked when we started is like, does Caitlin make a percentage of what you sell? So if that were the case, it'd be a pyramid scheme because yeah, every time Cat sold something, Caitlin would make well, a there's profit. There's different ways to define it, right? Well, no, but I'm saying there's still always a way. A pyramid scheme isn't just defined by one thing. A pyramid scheme is that you're serving the top. And it, and it falls down, right? Just because Caitlin doesn't make money off her sales doesn't mean it's not a pyramid scheme. No, no, I know. But I'm just saying at the bottom level, yeah. that would define it. Like, Caitlin got her to work for or like for the company. Caitlin gets a percentage. So even like Kat said, I could one day get higher than her and sell more than her. Caitlin would still be making that percentage. So that would be one example yes. of a pyramid scheme. There's also many more yes. to where, like, you're – Eventually, you're just serving the top, the top dog. Like, there's all the like whatever minions, the small people that are working and doing the work, pushing the product, and then there's like the CEO, the president, like all the people that started in the early stages, the investors who are just reaping the benefits of all their work. So, I I don't want to give my opinion before your question, but uh, I definitely think there's different ways to define it mm -hmm. um, as a pyramid scheme or not a pyramid scheme. But I think, like, at, at least at the surface level with her saying she can surpass the person that, like, recruited her, mm. that kind of gives it, like, a good push towards not being 100% a pyramid scheme. But yeah. what were you going to say? I'm not giving an opinion on it. Do Me I either. Not yet. It, yeah. Or do I not think it? Are you going to? You're going to. I will eventually. Yes. All right, all right. So what I'm going to say is that a pyramid scheme, right, you start at the top, people under the top, more people under that person, and then we continue to fall down, right? My argument here is that most companies are pyramid schemes. And I, I'm not talking about Monet or Avon. I'm talking about any company. You just stole my fucking opinion. Oh, that, did I? that was when I was going to give my opinion of if it was a pyramid scheme. You oh, literally sorry, just took buddy. it. You didn't know it, but yeah. I had literally no idea. My bad. I guess we're. That's you, good, though. We're you you want to keep going or you want me to give my opinion? <laughs> no, no, now give that, your opinion. Give your opinion. All right, so let me actually define pyramid scheme real quick. So, a pyramid scheme is a form of investment. Actually, I was wrong. It is illegal in the U.S., um, in which each paying participant recruits two further participants with returns being given to early participants using money contributed by later ones. Um, you guys can run that back. I'm not going to say it twice, but yeah. that was the, legit, the legitimate definition of it. And then what you just started was actually my opinion. So, excuse me, I think literally any big corporation, company, business, like large scale is literally a pyramid scheme like me i work i, I mean i don't want to i don't want to put on blast because i don't know if people from work listen or whatever but i work at a really big insurance company and um i get paid a base salary a starter like like coming in salary and i do a shit ton of work like a lot of work like everything and then there's people above me and they take meetings and it goes further and further to where eventually there's the ceo who's just reaping the benefits of everyone below. Like, yeah, I'm sure they go to crazy international meetings and this and that and, like, go see, like, account reps and all this crazy stuff. But, like, I worked at another company where I did all the labor, like, all the crazy work, picking stuff up, moving shit, cleaning, cooking. And then the people above me didn't really do much. They just sat and watched. I think any company that's built the right way has the people making the least amount of money doing the most amount of work. I think that's just the example of creating a good business. 
That's how it should be. That's the economy, bro. It, every, everything starts with a base that is huge, making the least amount of money, doing a lot of work, and then it narrows and gets higher as you go. And that's like we were saying that with Drew's episode. It's called playing the game. Eventually, you'll be one of those people mm-hmm. that are up top, not doing the same amount of work as the people coming in. But I, you literally, that was my opinion. I don't think it's a pyramid scheme. Or I guess you could say I do think it's a pyramid I think scheme. It is. I it do, is. yeah. It, it doesn't matter what you want to say. Either way, I do or I don't. But I think if it is, it's just a normal company like infrastructure. It's not like, oh, they're ripping people off. This is bullshit. Like they're they're just like I think it's le- legitimate. That's the way you should build a company is bottom yeah. up. Right? I don't think there's any way around it to say that it's definitely a pyramid scheme. And I'm not, and I am not saying it's a bad thing at all, at all. Because as if people were getting a cut of yours mm-hmm. from what you sell, I would be very against that. Yeah. But for people signing you up and then getting recognized for that, I have no problem with that. What's what's the problem? Guess what? At work, I get incentives. Same. To get, to someone, get, to, to, get someone to apply. So, what, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's definitely a pyramid scheme. And I I don't think there's an there's really not an argument against it because if you the whole – all corporations, you said it, they're built like pyramid schemes. That's what makes money. That's what happens. And – if if you can you can't hate on Monet for being a pyramid scheme because the company you're working for probably is too. Well, the yeah. one question I do have though, it won't really change my opinion since Cat hasn't talked in 20 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, Cat. Um, <laughs> can you move up in the company? So yes, you can make a lot more money, but can you ever be someone that's not a salesperson? Oh, absolutely. But another thing that goes with that, and I was actually thinking about it when you were saying like the people that make the least money do the most work yeah the the people that are quote unquote like the ceos i guess i'll call of of monet they're still doing the work which is kind of hard to believe for some people like and i get that because if you think about the pyramid yeah you're like oh yeah they're at, at the top no like they're they're sitting on the board they're trying the products they're selling the products too because if you really think about it like you're saying somebody had to start selling them somewhere and then it went from there but if they not necessarily if they stopped, but if the people that are above me stopped, they would just drop off. I mean, it would probably give me a better chance to, not really a better chance. Like, it, I don't even know how to exactly explain it. It wouldn't give me a better chance to like kind of replace them. I mean, as long as I like I say, as long as I work for it, I can reach to the top of where they are, and that doesn't even have to be like, oh, I have to make X amount of money so they get this certain cut, and then I can be up there with them. They basically still do exactly what we're doing they've just been in it longer they know a lot more they've they've gotten the feel they're comfortable with it and they're they're successful at it so yeah see that's the part that like confuses me because like if you're like she said like not the ceos but like the very high up like whatever you want to call them well even the ceos are still selling it though yeah see if the ceo of your company is still selling it something's like it just doesn't sit right Do with me. Do you know me. that for a fact, though, that they're actually selling? Like, like, have you legitimately seen, not seen, but, like, you know she's, like, pitching this on her personal social media. Or like, well, that, you know, I've, I'm she's just trying to say. Her company. But I'm just trying but, to say, like, they're, if I think, my opinion, if your CEO's selling the product, that's it's not like a CEO. There's someone higher than her. Like, yeah, the CEO. The CEO is taking board meetings and sitting there, like, yeah. I. You can't be selling the product. I mean, maybe. I, I'm not talking shit. No, no, she no, really no, could be, like, but there's no one higher. That, there's got to be someone sitting in a room somewhere that's not selling the hair product. I there would, has to be. I would think with the product being so good, if you want people to believe that you're actually legit, and like you said, like a lot of companies, yeah, with the being a pyramid scheme and any any like big company, like you said, with the insurance company, there's always somebody at the top doing like nothing. I feel like if you really stood behind it, sure, you could sit back and do nothing for a little while, but who would trust you? Like, who, if you're not at least, I mean, I'm not saying you have to sell a frick ton either. Like, if you're not selling even just a little bit, like, who's still going to believe that you believe in it? Mm. You know? Well, what are I even trying to say? The CEOs do nothing, because they do. No, yeah, that, they have I didn't want to say that. Yeah. Of trust. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying they're the, not doing the, the same big, as the people they, at the bottom, making, and she's saying they kind of are. Yeah. So I, that's I find that hard to believe, but I can't speak on that. Hey, they might be. I, exactly. I don't have enough information to speak on it. So I mean, if enough they of do them go r- around and like do those conferences, which is like any company goes around has like big conferences and in, in like even in the smaller towns. Like I went to Rochester in March or whatever for somebody who is up at the top, and she still sells. Yeah. She's like, my family loves it. I love it, 
And I mean, you're right. She's definitely going around and obviously going to preach the company. But I mean, it was a room full of us. Yeah. Who were already in the business. I'm not saying like yeah. you. I mean, you could lie. So you're saying they still believe in it. They don't particularly oh, they, go. Obviously, you got to believe in it. To, like, yeah, they believe in it. But sure. they're not going around actually. Like, I mean, they're not doing what you're doing. They're not doing the groundwork, well, that, that, pushing like, the product. That's what I'm saying. I don't I don't know if they were because, like, it was a room full of people who were already in yeah, the business. Yeah, which is what I, I would mean? assume they'd be doing, but going like, to conferences. I'm saying and that she was, I mean, she said she's like, I still sell it. Like, she yeah. had her family still buying it. Like, her family was there, like, little kids all running around who, who whatnot, and. I mean, she's definitely reaping good benefits. But no, I see what you're saying. And I, you're you're right. There, there is definitely someone at the top that's making the real like business decisions. Yeah. And there's CIOs or CISOs that are worried about security. They're worried about the information. That's what I'm saying. There's definitely people like that. And I, like, there, there is. There has to be. Yeah, it's the top dog ain't just like. Packing up her fucking trunk and fucking driving doing, her don't get me wrong, The CEO of Monet is definitely not doing nothing. Yeah. They're yeah. doing things, but they're not. Their focus is different than your focus, right? Because oh, that's why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. They want you to sell and they want to make business decisions, business decisions so that company can grow. And that's just that's yeah, business. That's just business. Yeah, that's absolutely. literally business. And that. So when I hear people talking, giving you a bad rap about Monet and just strictly like hating on the pyramid scheme i go to work i look at my hierarchy chart guess what i'm in a pyramid scheme and there's no other way else to put it the the shape is a pyramid that's a pyramid scheme i mean so my my scribe job's a freaking pyramid scheme i gotta raise literally i became a trainer as a scribe basically you just like i said you just train other people yeah i got a 30 cent pay raise yeah congratulations cat guess what up the pyramid you go. And just, just a little bit, but definitely not yeah. a lot of it. And that was based on somebody else telling me, "All right, now you could, now you can have this." Yeah. Like. But keep keep talking. I want to look something up quick. <laughs> oh okay. Well, actually, like, so I guess I had another question for you. All right. How do you feel? Like, like, how does it make you feel when people say, like, "All right, stop posting. You work for a pyramid scheme." Blah blah blah. Like. Pretty much, how do you deal with hate, one, and, like, does it phase you? Because, like, obvi- it has to phase you a little bit, right? Oh, it's absolutely. It's just in nature. Like, I would humans. be lying if I said it didn't phase me, because you're right, I'm human. Like, how do you react to it? Like, I would, personally, I would be pissed off. I'd be pissed. But so, I, mean, I mean, and you know me. Yeah. I have a temper. Yeah. And I, and I can have a temper, which is just, like I said, it's me. Yeah. So, yeah, I do get mad in the beginning. Um, it's one thing when someone says it to my face. So like if someone said it to my face, I would just kind of shrug my shoulders and be like, okay, you know, first of all, I'm like, all right, cat, don't freak out. But I'm like, all right, why do you think that? Like, I just tell me because like you're saying, you know, okay, you're in a pyramid scheme. All right. Well then I bet you they'll come back and tell me and I'll be like, all right, well, what do you do for work? And I'll be like, well, you just described to me a pyramid scheme. So like you can't really say anything. What people are coming at me on social media is like another thing because Obviously, they're not saying it to my face. They're sending me paragraphs. They're sending me links to, you know, lawsuits, yada, yada, stuff like that. And I'm just like, okay, well, do you believe everything you read on the Internet? Because the last time I looked, you know, people lie all the time. I mean, that's and that's definitely your opinion. If you think I'm lying to you, well, then by all means, you don't have to talk to me. Mm. But like, I'm going to do what I want to do because I shouldn't let my or I shouldn't let your opinion, I'll say, affect what I do. I mean, you're, you're more than welcome to say it, but but like I, I was going to say, you know me too. I have yeah. thick skin, and I'm just kind of like, yeah. I have that attitude, so maybe for other people it's a little harder just to brush off, but I would be lying. Like, it, it definitely affects me because I'm just like, all right, it, it puts you down a little bit, so you just have to kind of boost yourself back up. And yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I've seen paragraphs. Like, like You mentioned paragraphs. I've yeah. seen paragraphs posted by people that sell Monet, and they just get honestly ripped for something that they're doing to make money and just like we go, we go to work we go make money like how would you feel if someone's like Mason fuck yourself you work for insurance idiot I've had, like, people, would, I've had people feel, say that it, it, like, it, yeah but I've had people say that like oh you got a degree in this and you do this and, but yeah you're, you're doing what you have to do to make money yeah you're doing like, and even like you explain to me like you like doing your job am I wrong by saying that um I, I, yeah I enjoy my job but I also I'm there because I know there's an opportunity to be like 
way higher up yeah. if I stay. So and I'm not I'm not saying like, oh, in 10 years, if I'm still doing the same thing, I'm fucking, I love it. No. But I, I see and I know people that are higher up in the company and like I see what the company can do for you. So I'm staying to see if I can eventually be in one of those positions. That's, if that makes sense. That's, no, it's human nature. Yeah. If you're not looking for your way up, then you're looking for your way out. Yep. And that's, that's, that's business. And I, I actually, sorry, there's some people that like to be where they are. And they're comfortable. Oh, yeah, for sure. But most, but most people are looking for opera. At least most people our age. Yeah, if you're yeah. young, you're not looking to settle right you're now. You're looking for growth. You're looking but um, all right. So I looked up what I wanted to look up, and um, I don't. I I, tr- I try to say it. I don't know. It's not really taking a shot. It's just what this says. So I looked up what makes a pyramid scheme illegal, because your job, my job, aren't illegal. Cat's job is not illegal. But I'm just yeah. saying, yeah. what makes an actual pyramid scheme illegal? Because we were saying, oh, well, all jobs are pyramid schemes. Yes. In theory, yes. yes. Realistically, I said, what what does make a pyramid scheme illegal? And um, I guess the thing that actually makes it illegal is they're unsustainable. So basically how a pyramid scheme works, a real one that's illegal, is it's based on recruiting members and getting a percentage of them and like blah, blah, blah. It just keeps working the same way. But eventually you can't keep recruiting. So like, so like for my company, we have a certain amount of desks and a certain amount of spots and positions. Once they're filled, we're not hiring any longer. A pyramid scheme endlessly hires mm-hmm. until no one else is interested in doing it the top investors make a shit ton of money and then eventually they disappear. So that's what makes a pyramid scheme illegal is that they're not actually sustainable. Like they're not going to be around forever. So like Advocare, that's still around, but it, remember when it was huge yes, around here, yes, yes, it was a real quick thing. It went around for like, actually still around. Yeah, it went around for like two years. Um, I mean, I took, I took Advocare when I, I had to be like mm-hmm. this freshman in high or freshman in college. But, um, one of my buddies sold it. I took it like, there's thing they come and they go like yeah. Avon. It came. It was here for a while, what but was it that went. Candle company. Huh? Was candle company. That Sensi. Yeah. Sensi. Sensi. Yep. yep. Sensi. There was another one before Sensi that tried it. I don't remember, but that, but that's the difference. So you still see them yeah. driving around, stickers on the back yeah. of the cars. Stuff so like so that. My actually, you said Advocare. I saw. I know somebody. Yeah. No. They're they're still the around, but they come and they go in like spurts, and they're yeah. not they're they're not here for a long time. So like so like your company, um, it's been here. For about a year and a half, two years, like, like, Ooh. not no, like I'm saying where it's been oh, huge, big. like everyone's oh, been oh, publicly like known. Know Pub- it. yeah. yeah, it's been around for probably ever, but I'm saying like four years. Okay, so four recently years. it, it yeah, just kind of started sparking and like mm-hmm. it's getting big around at least our area. So is it something that is you believe is sustainable or eventually like because you guys don't have a limited amount of seats or desks, you work from home, mm-hmm. so like it, it's almost what this is describing. Like eventually you guys will just keep recruiting and recruiting and recruiting, it'll never stop. So the interest will die down before your amount of employees dies down. Do you see that happening or are you not interested in even no, um, knowing anything about that? No, I, I'm interested definitely because if no one's interested, you know, you're not making money yeah. like with customers and stuff. But um, in terms of people joining, it, and it's funny, it's like cliche, but like, you know, even if you don't have, even if you don't buy the product, you guys wash your hair, right? Yeah. Like everybody needs shampoo. So... And, and I guess this is where I'll go in. We're like Avon. I really don't know a lot about it. But I just I know, know it's like makeup and like well, yeah. face products like and stuff. Diff- like a lot of different stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. Too. They have like, I think they have like clothes now or, or something yeah. like that. Like we stick just to the hair care where like as Avon has like a mix of things that, you know, a lot of people may not need. And you said, you said skincare, Mason. Like I know there's a newer yeah. company that does skincare. So it's kind of like they just outright. You know. So, so I guess just to like summarize the question flat out, do you think eventually it could be while well, you're selling it or whenever it could be mm-hmm. 30 years from now? Do you think eventually the employees will be larger than the demand? So, do you think you guys will recruit so many people that one day everyone that's interested in the company will be selling it? And I know you can go with like. Well, people are always going to be born and people are always younger no, than it. But you get what I'm saying. No, Do you think one day you guys are going to recruit so many yeah, people so that no, you're not going to have no one to sell to? It's market saturation is pretty much what he's referring to. No, I hear to. you. Um, honestly, for, for right now, and my opinion could change. Like, you know, everything changes. Stuff could happen years from now. But yeah. for right now, I would say I don't see that happening. But, like, I can always come back to you guys in a few years and let you know again. <laughs> well, but for right hopefully. now. <laughs> I don't see your future ball over there. So, like, obviously you have no idea. No, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. But, no, for right now I would say I don't see that really happening. That's right. fair. I mean, I, 
Well, let's be honest. It's it's growing. It's growing. But where's the cap? There's always a cap somewhere. Yeah. Well, there's either a cap or demise, and that's just what happens. It goes up so far, and it keeps growing, and eventually it stops. And it's just that's and also. And that could business. be another thing. You like you said, like 30 years from now. It could cap, but you don't know when, right? Like, you know? But it could also cap and it could stabilize. Yeah. Or it can cap and go down. It just, yeah. there's eventually, there's a ceiling to everything. And that's just, that's life. There's mm-hmm. a ceiling. Yeah. Um, speaking of a ceiling, let's talk about one that all of us have signed before. Oh. Our lucky this. fucking sponsor, the Palisades Hotel Bar and Grill. The only bar in Rome where you can sign the ceiling and leave your legacy for life. Forever. Forever. Until it burns down, though. Are we all signed here? Oh, absolutely. Everyone signed? Yeah, dude, that should be a thing. If you're not signed on the ceiling, you can't even come. Nope. I think that's that's a new mandate. The Real Bar Podcast. If you're not signed in the Pale States Hotel ceiling, it's gotta you're out of here, It's a here, trademark, kid. honestly. Nobody but, else does that. <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, to be honest, I just want to do a real quick shout-out. I appreciate um, the Palisades sponsoring us uh, for at least season two. Uh, we really appreciate everything you guys do, uh, the money you guys contributed. I mean, it, it went to a lot of stuff we can do around here. RJ, I'm sure you feel the same yep. way. And you guys are – and obviously, uh, you guys are seeing it. It's coming to action. We're, we're, make, we're making moves. Uh, the, the new logo hopefully coming out soon. I can't Still wait. Still not seen the chicken wings on the table, though, that well, aren't here today. The Palisade sponsor right. did a little bit extra for you. Why don't you take a look in the envelope? Oh, we do, yeah, we do have something for Kat just for coming on. Just for coming this on. This is what you were going to say to her earlier that I was like, why don't you just wait? Yeah. When she I, said she wanted to eat dinner there. Oh, you guys. <laughs> so the Palisades is giving every guest that comes on the $10 gift card to go eat wings, sign the ceiling, drink a few beers. You won't regret your time there. And I know, well, actually, I know Kat. <laughs> she loves them. She loves the funky wings. And I guarantee you she'll enjoy that gift card. We might, we might be going right after this, to be honest. We might be going after this. I mean, Tuesday Don't night's wing night. I've, night. I've, I was oh, going to pitch it to you guys when we were done, but I think I want to go there. So Tuesday night is wing night at the Pale States Hotel. We'll fi- hashtag saying, but ad. I, but I think, what are they, like 30 cent wings? Something like that? I don't know. Depending on market price. Hashtag ad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it's like 40, 30 or 40 cent wings. But something. Still good. Yeah, for sure. But, um, all right, yeah, we just want to do that shout-out real quick. Um, wanted to give that to Kat, so we appreciate you guys giving us those gift cards as well. We appreciate you coming on, Kat, oh, for thank sure. You, thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're not done, though, so hope no one turned it <laughs> off. <laughs> that was the halfway uh, <laughs> segment. Um, so back to, like, talking about businesses and your hair care and stuff like that. Um, do you have any advice for anyone that, like, not that you started this company or business, but, like, you kind of, like, I'd say you run it like on your own terms sort of mm-hmm. thing. Do you have any advice for someone that wants to like run their own company or like kind of branch out and do something on their own that's like not not of the norm, I guess, of society? Absolutely. Um, well, for people for like doing their own company, I ju- I'd definitely say just make sure it's something that you're passionate about and that you can continue to talk about. There's nothing worse than just sitting there being like, all right, I'm going to go, you know, do this business, join this business, or, you know, create my own business, and a month later, you're like, all right, well, that was fun. Like, I would always say just, even if you're slightly interested and you're like, this could be something, take the chance, and like I said, be passionate about it, because your passion is going to drive your success. Man, that's literally, <laughs> I feel like I, I love it, because passion is is huge, and we're seeing it. In every episode we've had this yeah, season. Yeah, it's definitely like a reoccurring theme it is. here, yeah. It's and I don't mean to be the broken record. No, no, and <laughs> it's a broken record that's really good to hear because if you, like, you don't have passion, then what are you doing? Like, really, what are you doing? That's what I'm saying. Like, you'll quit after a month and be like, yeah, that was a good try. Like, yeah. and you might even think you love it in the beginning and it does not work out after a month, but, like, that's where you start to realize what you actually like to do or stuff that you, you know, you want to yeah. That's like, I mean, I don't know about you because you've only been here for like maybe a month. But like for me with this podcast, like I'm wicked passionate about any, like, you know, yeah. dude, I text you all day, every night about yeah, little things. He we really could, does. Dude, I lo- like I w- if I could quit my job tomorrow and make half of what I make in my job and just do this, I would do it. Yeah. Like I love doing this. So like even like, yeah, I've had, I've had people talk shit. I've had cr- like criticisms, like whatever. But like I keep doing it and I try to keep getting better. I don't know if you have any passion with this yet. Maybe you'll build it. But like you have to have a passion to keep doing something or at least do it the right way. You know what I mean? And we actually really do work very hard in this podcast. (laughs) There is a lot, like it may, we come on, we, we talk to you guys for about an hour, 15 minutes. 
and then we're done. But like behind the scenes, there is so much. Yeah. yeah like Mason and I have open lines of communication, twenty four seven. I mean, it's if we're drunk, we're sober, we're we're at work, whatever. We're talking. We're just shooting ideas off each other. Oh, this might be cool. And yeah. And honestly, like, it doesn't seem like a lot of work, right? Because we come on, we do our skit, and we're yeah. gone. Yeah. Exactly. But the the things that go into it is, it's. It's actually crazy, and like, there's a lot that people don't know about. People do know about whatever. It's like that picture of the iceberg. Have you ever seen that? Where it's like this giant. Iceberg you see a little tip on top of the thing on of the water, yeah. but underneath it is a huge. Yeah. yeah. And that's basically what you're saying. Nobody sees behind the scenes. They yeah. just see the end product. Yeah. And that's not even just for us. That's for anyone. You, like, people don't know your backstory. They will now, mm-hmm. but they don't. Cat Rude. She works at Rome Hospital. Yeah, sells Got stupid hair care products. That's what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. they don't like, know. They don't know. Then you they actually. come listen to this and they're like, oh, like, they're, like, so she actually believes in them. She likes but, them. Like, she actually like looked them up. Like, no one knows any of that shit. They just look at it on social media. There she is, part of a fucking pyramid scheme, trying to yeah. make a couple bucks. Like, no one sees what you're actually trying to accomplish or what happened prior to you getting to where you are. And most of the time, people, even if I'm posting it on social media, they're like, oh, there's there's that picture of a shampoo bottle or there's a bottle in the background she's talking they just keep clicking they don't listen yeah, yeah. because they're like they don't want to hear it but that's the exact reason for why we're doing this yeah absolutely. we want to get people like you or anyone that chance to like say your side of the story on a platform that people will hear it like you don't you don't know what anyone's going through until you hear their story mm-hmm. and that's just plain and simple yeah no, i love that you guys do this Seriously. i appreciate it we do appreciate that I and mean, we hope people just keep coming on and telling their story because the more people that know about your story the more people will res- like respect you and it's not about that but mm-hmm. respect yeah. is given and taken at the same yeah, time absolutely. um all right so kind of to keep like to stay on that little point of like um what we were just talking about do you think like being in rome has i mean we ask every guest this yeah we really but do, do you think being in rome has like kind of been like a stepping stone or like kind of set back to like you building your company and selling or networking do you try to reach outside of rome or like because because i mean at least for me i know rome is like somewhat toxic it depends who you know and like blah 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 it's been getting better on this podcast even i think like i think people have been more open-minded yeah. but it's it used to be at least somewhat toxic do you experience that and what do you do about it i do um and it's unfortunate like you know it's our hometown but even the closest people that you know your friends or family are really close to they're still kind of toxic they don't say it to you but eventually yeah. it gets so back mine to you. <laughs> mine tell me <laughs> well no I, i've heard a couple of things i, I mean like out. i don't know i've like i said i have friends who will actually reach out to me on social media that i thought i was close to or i maybe was close to in high school that i'm not so much anymore that just like you're saying they don't they're very quick to disagree or not really hear me out yep. but um for what you're saying i definitely go outside of rome like i went to syracuse so yep. This was something that when I was out there, if people were interested, I mean, I have people on my social media, like outside of Rome, definitely. I have people that I know in different states just from like hockey or, you know, growing up with, you know, people who do different sports and whatnot that don't live in New York or don't live close to Rome. And they'll always message me and ask me about it. So it's really cool to have, you know, more people to not even necessarily reach out to just to be able to talk to about it. So I'm not necessarily stuck in Rome. But when I am talking about it in Rome, I do feel like there's a lack of encouragement. More so when RJ was saying, do you ever feel discouraged when people come at you? That's unfortunately what I feel when I'm around here. I have my family who definitely supports me. But I know underlying in the beginning, they were kind of like, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. So do you, So I guess I'm going like, to ask a question, and it's just mm-hmm. a, pretty simple. Do you think people in Rome or outside of Rome are more receptive to you as a salesman or um, even a person, I guess, like your, your habits, whatever, like you as a person. I'd say people outside of Rome, unfortunately. I mean, it's just, it's not really something. I think, I mean, I kind of agree, but you know, I always play devil's advocate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also think it's kind of an unfair question because um, it's kind of I mean this is kind of funny as well like you think about like the girls you know from Rome from high school yep. and like yeah you're dating when I'm dating whatever but like you ever like see these girls every single day whatever and then you go to like see girls that live 45 minutes away and you think they're just 10 times hotter but the guys from there think the girls here 
I think it has something to do with see what I'm getting at yeah. it, with being around them so often. So like everyone here can't sell these hair products. Everyone knows her. If they don't know her, they know of her. They know someone that knows her. It's such a common theme of like cat rude, yeah, whatever. But that no one even gives enough to like look into it. To where yeah. like if she was from Syracuse, we would have no opinion like formed on her yes. as of now I so if we saw this and she came to rome from syracuse we'd be like, oh, let me check out that hair product like that seems cool yeah i think i mean yeah i do think it's a little more toxic than most places here mm -hmm. but i also think it's because it's such a small community and we all know each other yeah so like they 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 kind of form their opinion based on the old you or like what you used Absolutely. to be like and it's smaller exactly so and it's everybody else's opinion about you yeah. as well yeah you know, who knows who, like you said, if you don't know me directly, but yeah. you're a friend of a friend, well, that person could just ask their friend and be like, oh, you know, Kat, what do you think? Exactly. And if that person doesn't like me, of course, they're going to give the same kind of vibe mm. to that other person. And they're going to be like, all right, yeah, never mind. You're right. But they don't know me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I definitely agree. Like I said, I was playing devil's advocate, but I definitely agree. It's a little toxic around here, but I do think it's because it's such a small, close knit community that like after someone has an opinion on you, it's done. Yeah, like so you're not changing it. Just first impressions last forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, all right, we have a couple more. Jesus, that was loud. We have a couple more questions and then, uh, we got to wrap this up. This has been probably the longest episode actually. Yeah. Now that I, I was starting to think like we're, uh, yeah, we're getting there. We got to do two more questions. We'll get out of here. Um, all right. So with your company with the, uh, Monet and the hair products, um, have you ever had like an idea of like creating your own product or starting your own business or brand and kind of like building your company based on the same infrastructure that like Monet is like, like kind of branching away from them and like not working for someone, but working for yourself, even though that's what you do. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying having your own product or like sort of thing, if you get what I'm saying, like no, we I, have this podcast. Like, yeah. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say a product in mind. Yeah. Probably not a product. I have thought, you know, cause like you said, being your own boss, being, you know, having your own business, I have thought of like, you know, creating my own business, in other things not product based maybe yeah. a little service based thing mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you know venturing from there but definitely not a product actually because i was thinking about that earlier and i was like i don't even know where i would begin <laughs> because like you know you don't know you need a product until someone gives you that product and then you're sitting there like crap why didn't i think of that like that's just constant yeah, yeah. all right that's fair um all right we got to skip that question because we can't do it rj fucked up on the oreos <laughs> my b Man, I love Oreos. <laughs> but, um, all right, last question. Um, is there anything you want to tell anyone that's listening um, about your company or what you sell or your products, bias or non bias, that, like, just to, like, clear up something that's, like, a general, like, stigma or, like, a uh, stereotype? Like, anything at all. Like, one statement you could just say that would just, like, shut down a lot of common misconceptions. Um,. Something that comes to mind is literally keep an open mind because you don't know. Like, you don't, unless you ask, unless you, you know, don't make that in first impression, like RJ said, your only impression. Because if you don't know and you're very quick to judge, you could be missing out on something you, you need. I'm not saying you need this shampoo. If you do, great. Like, like I said, come talk to me. But keep an shout open out. mind. Yeah, shout out, Moni. Keep an open mind because, I mean, that's only causing more negativity and that's not good for anybody. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, last thing we, we don't ask everyone, but we should, we tried to, um, what was like your impressions as far as like coming on here? What do you think we can do better? What do we do? That's bad. Like anything about just being here, coming on your whole experience. Um, what do you think about it? Maybe an air condition. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As you guys can see, I've been taking my headphones off because it's getting a little warm. She's warmer. roasting the garage. That's <laughs> fucked. Yeah. Nah. Oh, my God. I can't roast this garage. You know how many times I've been in this garage? Have you been up? here? I have. I didn't know. I've had so many parties. I didn't know if you've been when here. When you texted me earlier and you're like, if you know where it is, I'm like, of course I know where it is. Mason, New Year's Eve, you know. Yeah, I see, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know. He may not have known I was there at the time. No, I assumed I you had there. No, um. <laughs> No, you guys make it really comfortable. Honestly, I've had a great time today. We hope that's we. We want people to come on to be comfortable and to oh, say what you yeah. want. Yeah. We don't want to pull. We don't no, want to push. Yeah. So do you feel like you Just got like what you wanted to say off, and we didn't drive the conversation one direction? No, not at all. And okay. I, I think that's really good. Like you guys don't pressure anybody, and I've actually noticed that with other podcasts. I don't know if you've gotten the same feedback, but with other episodes, I feel like everyone's 
like I'm saying, this is my opinion, but when I'm listening to it, it doesn't seem like you guys are steering it one way or another, which is great because, like you said, you want people on here yep. speaking their mind. And yeah. I've had fun today. Like, I, if you see it on Instagram, it's one thing, but to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's cool. That's um, good feedback. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Let's wrap it up. I guess we're good. Um, first, I want to let Kat. Do you have any social medias you want to shout out? Instagram, any, wherever you want to. Anything you have. I do want to shout out another podcast, if that's okay. That's I fair. mean, definitely this podcast. No, no, that's fair. Like, anything, fine. anything. And you might, hear, you might hear it on uh, my social media. The MF CEO, Andy Frisilla. He's a great, like, kind of like balls to the wall kind of guy, if that makes any sense. He's just very hardcore. So. If you're interested in that podcast, definitely check it out. Otherwise, just keep listening to these guys because they're pretty cool. Sweet. Fair enough. No social medias or anything? Honestly, I... Shout out the Insta. Come on. Shout out my Insta? Shout it out. All right. (laughs) We're here to promote. (laughs) You just said we don't force conversation and then you're making her... Yeah, sorry. This this, this is what I'm forcing. No, go ahead. I'm not going to tell you to like friend me on Facebook because I'm only on there a couple times, but you know, (laughs) see Route 16. I'm not saying what I'm saying. I'm on there. (laughs) We're trying to help your business. That's all we're here for. Oh, I know. Um... All right. Anything else? You're good. Um, give the dogs a like, or you know, swipe up on their pics. If they get an Insta, that. or they just get. We're we're working on it. All right. We are. We're we'll be on the lookout on for cats, dogs, Insta. <laughs> um, all right. Without further ado, appreciate you guys coming out to the real bar. You guys can find this officially now on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, anywhere you can find a podcast. You can find this podcast. Uh, RJ, I appreciate you coming on, being the co-host once again. All right, guys. Take it easy. And we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.